Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace from on high and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord peace in the whole world, for stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy church, and for all, learn to with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our holy father, Francis, Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For most, Reverend Metropolitan William for our God, loving Bishop Kurt, the Venerable Presbyter at the Academy, Christ, all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our government, for all the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel by sea and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O oh God, by your grace. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady of Theotokos and our Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Amen. Our God, mighty beyond description, glorious above understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression. Look with compassion, this holy church, O Master, and show us and those who pray with us the riches of your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is due all glory, honor, and worship, now and ever and forever. Let us sing.
attentive. Peace be to all. Wisdom be attentive. of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, Apollos and I are God's co-workers, while you are his cultivation, his building. Thanks to the favor God showed me, I laid a foundation as a wise master builder might do and now someone else is building upon it. Everyone, however, must be careful how he builds. No one can lay a foundation other than the one that has been laid, namely Jesus Christ. If different ones build on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, the work of each will be made clear. The day will disclose it. That day will make its appearance with fire, and fire will test the quality of each man's work. If the building a man has raised on this foundation still stands, he will receive his recompense. If a man's building burns, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one fleeing through fire. Are you not aware that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, and you are that temple. Peace be to your reader, wisdom be attentive. Listen to a reading of the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. be attentive. At that time, while dismissing the crowds, Jesus insisted that his disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side of the lake. When he had sent them away, he went up on the mountain nigh himself to pray, remaining there alone as evening drew on. Meanwhile, the boat, already several hundred yards off from shore, 
was being tossed about in the waves, raised by strong headwinds. At about three in the morning, Jesus came walking to them on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, in their fear they began to cry out. Jesus hastened to reassure them, saying, Get hold of yourselves, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter spoke up and said, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, Jesus said. So Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water, moving toward Jesus. But when he perceived how strong the wind was, becoming frightened, Peter began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus had once stretched out his hand and caught him. How little faith you have, he exclaimed. Why did you falter? Once they had climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat showed him reverence, declaring, Beyond doubt, you are the Son of God. After making the crossing, they reached the shore at Gennesaret. It's good to see all of you here once again at St. Anne's this morning in the beautiful celebration of this divine liturgy. I have a request, if possible, from our good cantor and choir up there. Everything is beautiful this morning with the Slavonic, and it certainly is such a rich part of our liturgy, but this is my final liturgy here in the United States before I go back to Rome, and I was wondering if we could hear a little more English today. When I, when I go back to the Russian college, in Rome, it's all going to be in Slavonic once again. So a little bit more of that today would be a wonderful, beautiful hearing in my ears at least. Thank you. I also want to thank all of you for once again making me feel so welcome here at St. Anne's and indeed to be able to celebrate with this liturgy and to be here for the several weeks that I have been here. It seems like I just got here is indeed quite a treat for me. I ask for your prayers as I will be departing this week to go back to Rome, and indeed it will be quite a journey to make to get back there. There will be one journey which I do not relish, but as we were about to hear, sometimes the journeys are like that that are the most important within our lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. The journeys that we do have within our lives are so very important, especially the ones that are the ones that we hesitate or are reluctant to make within our lives. They say that the longest and most difficult or even the most dangerous journey a human being has to make, for example, is the journey between the head and the heart. And sometimes that can be a long, long journey. But sometimes the journey that seems the most challenging, the most arduous, it's the ones that ends up being the most rewarding, that ends up bringing us closer in our faith and our devotion to God. When we go through the amusement park, I'm sure we could all remember those days. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to be going to them more frequently in the future. But we all know that one of the most safe, most comfortable, most easygoing ride that we can go on especially if we want to bypass the roller coaster or the whip, is the Ferris wheel. It's a very family-friendly ride, a very gentle one, and in a lot of ways it's still a very exciting ride as we get to see so much of a park. But the Ferris wheel's beginning has 
a lot to be desired. As a matter of fact, there was a time where it was considered a very dangerous ride and one that indeed most people after a while were afraid to take. And that's because there were too many problems early on with its construction in the 19th century. But then a man named John Ferris came along and being an engineering mind that he was, was very convinced that he had designed the safest possible way to have this amusement park ride. He was so convinced that this was a perfectly safe ride that he made announcements to all the local newspapers for them to show up for its first demonstration. But on the day of the demonstration, when the crowd showed up to witness this machine, this newfangled Ferris wheel operate, the same problem that had plagued the ride for many years and now was going to threaten this ride today was severe winds which began to kick up on that day. Because the winds were howling so bad on that day, when Ferris asked for volunteers, no one was willing to get on the ride. Finally, Ferris himself and his closest volunteer, his wife, who, by the way, was expecting at that point, got on the ride. And then, ultimately, a close friend of his who was a reporter was brave enough to get on with the two of them. They got on the ride, and despite the terrible winds that day, rode very safely and very comfortably on this new Ferris wheel. And of course, after the people witnessed this, many of them were anxious to try it out even on that very same day. There had to be someone to believe in for this journey to be effective. There had to be people who were willing to trust him, who were close to him. And finally, there had to be their example that led the rest of them. And that's true with this journey today that the disciples are taking across the sea, a galley which indeed can be a very rough, predictable place, unpredictable place because of the winds that kick up. Of course, being out in the open water is an act of faith as well, especially in the ancient times. But indeed, any time one goes out on the water, there is always a sense of risk. Especially when the winds begin to kick up, especially when the storms come out of nowhere, which often happens in that place in the world to this day. You could have a perfectly calm sea there, and then all of a sudden the winds come up, and the next thing you know you have a storm, and you have a sea that's choppier than the Atlantic Ocean in such a little space. There's coming across a quote by a theologian by the name of John Trapp who once made the remark, if a person does not know how to pray, all he has to do is to go out to sea for a while and he will learn. And that's because in those situations, of course, one is most vulnerable and one is most helpless. In today's gospel, our Lord makes a very interesting demand of his disciples. He tells them to get into the boat and go across the lake ahead of him. They, he asked them to leave him on the other side of the shore and to go to the other side of the lake. They follow his instructions, but they had to wonder what in the world was he thinking. Well, he wasn't thinking so much at this point as he was praying. He was in prayer with the Father. And we're told that on this journey, they find themselves all of a sudden in the middle of one of these storms where the winds are kicking up. And they don't know what's going to happen. It's the middle of the night. And the storm is raging. When all law, hope was lost, there was all of a sudden our Lord walking to them on the water. At three o'clock in the morning, he is walking on the water. What we need to remind ourselves is that during this miracle, our Lord has not calmed the water yet. He's walking towards them on the water in the middle of this storm. He's not walking across smooth waters, as that would be easy enough, so to speak, for our Lord. He's actually walking in the middle of the storm towards them. When they first see him, they think he is a ghost. That's how utterly unreal the whole situation seems to be. When he approaches them, 
They think he's a ghost. And when he seeks to reassure them, Peter challenges him, as he often did, and said, Lord, if it's really you, call me out upon the water to walk towards you. And our Lord calls him out on this. Now, mind you, again, the storm is still raging. But Peter gets out, and as long as he keeps himself focused upon our Lord, as long as he sees who he is approaching, he actually does very well. But we're told very clearly today by the evangelist St. Matthew that as soon as Peter does something, he turns, he looks around at the winds, how strong they are, he looks and sees how overwhelming the storm is, that's when he begins to sink. When he takes his eyes off of our Lord, and the next thing you know, he's going down. But then he does something with his heartfelt appeal. He calls out, Lord, save me. And our Lord pulls him up and pulls him into the boat. And only after the boat, after they're back in the boat, does the storm calm down. Now, our Lord gave his disciples a very important lesson today, and it's certainly a very important lesson for us because right now we're still in the middle of a very big storm in our world. First of all, as I said, our Lord approaches them not on calm water, but he approaches them in the middle of the storm. And that's something we need to be mindful of, is the fact that our Lord didn't take the storm away because he knew the faith of his disciples needed to be strengthened. He knew that their faith and trust in him needed to be affirmed not on calm, level waters, but in the middle of a storm. And how important it is for us today to remind ourselves that we need to look for our Lord, yes, even in the middle of this storm that we are facing right now. Secondly, our Lord does not remove the storm right away. How many of us, when all of this was happening, had very strong, wishful thinking that all these challenges that we're facing now would simply go away after a while. And yet, our Lord, in reminding his disciples that he reminds us as well that sometimes we still need to make the journey even in the middle of that storm towards him. That we cannot simply assume that somehow by simply reaching out to our Lord, the storm will end just like that. You know, sometimes our Lord will want our faith strengthened. Sometimes he will want our faith tested. Sometimes he will give us the opportunity to move towards him, as he did Simon Peter, right in the middle of that storm. And it's in those moments sometimes that we draw closer to our Lord if we do something and avoid Simon Peter's mistake, and that is... We have to make sure that we keep our eyes fixed on our Lord as we move towards him. The moment we begin to take our eyes off of our Lord and we simply focus on the storm itself, then, like Simon Peter, we're going to begin to sink as well. We'll sink into despair. We'll sink into fear. We might sink into anger and frustration and even hatred if we're not careful during a time like this. But when we do have those moments when we falter, like Simon Peter, we need to remember that's when we need to reach out to our Lord even more. So on this journey that we continue on in our lives today, let's all the more remember how important it is that first and foremost, our Lord will appear in the middle of these storms if we look for him. He will call us towards him, but he won't necessarily take the storm away right away. He's going to want to see if we can walk on choppy waters as well as smooth waters as well. And that, yes, if we have the opportunity to grow closer to him, to have that faith and trust in him, like Peter did with the rest of the apostles, he will lead them toward the calming of the waters as well. We can do so with our own example as well, trusting that our Lord will calm these waters when it is his time and trusting that no matter what, he'll still be there reaching out to us in the middle of this storm. May God bless each and every one of us. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Sister Christu. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Holy Father Francis, Pope of Rome, for our most holy Metropolitan William, for our God, loving Bishop Kurt, for those who serve and have served in this holy church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for our government, for all the service of our country. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people who are present who wage your great and abundant mercy for those who show us mercy. And for all Christians of the truth, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis Pope of Rome, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop Kurt, the entire priestly diaclum monastic order, our government and all the service of our country, the ever memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. Precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord God, my Holy Lord, receive the sacrifice of praise, and those who call upon the accept also the prayer of the sinners. Bring us to your holy altar, and also offer gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the people's failings. Make us worry to find favor in your sight, that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, and that the good spirit of your grace may rest on us, and upon his gifts, your presence, and upon all your people. Grant this to the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, <coughs> together with your holy good and like creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. Let us love on earth that with whom I we may profess.
understand or right, let us stand, all let us be attentive to offer the holy anaphora in peace. of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God and Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. and just to sing to you, to bless you, to thank you, to worship you in every place of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, ever the same, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non existence to being again, races if we had fallen, left nothing undone. He brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all those who give thanks to you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, for all that we know and that we do not know, for the manifest sin benefits bestowed upon us, we also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring aloft on their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and singing the triumphal hymn. Holy, holy. these blessed powers, our loving and kind Master, and say, Holy and all holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy and holy, magnificent is your glory, you so loved your world, you gave your only begotten Son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan on our behalf. On the night he was betrayed, or rather when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure and immaculate hands, gave thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Likewise, he took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Amen. Remembering, therefore, the saving command has come to pass on our behalf, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, the second coming in glory, offering you your own from your own always and everywhere. sacrifice we implore praying to you send down your holy spirit upon us and upon his gifts lying here before us 
Make this bread the precious body of your Christ, and that which is in this child's precious blood of your Christ, changing by your Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. That those who partake may bring about a spirit of vigilance and remission of sins in the community of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the kingdom, confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer the spiritual sacrifice for those departed in faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every just spirit brought to perfection in faith, especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. First, Lord, remember our Holy Father Francis, Pope of Rome, our Most Reverend Metropolitan William, our God, love you, Bishop Kurt, preserve holy churches in peace, safe there on health for many years, as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. Remember, O Lord, this city in which we dwell in every city and community and the faithful living in them. Remember, O Lord, those who travel by sea or in land the sick, the suffering, the captive, and grant them salvation. Remember, O oh Lord, those who bring offerings before good deeds of holy churches and those who remember the poor and upon all of us send down your mercies. And grant them with one voice and one hour we may glorify and praise your most honored and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our God, great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated that our God loves us all, may receive them on his holy, holy mystical altar as aroma of spiritual fragrance, and may send down upon us returns the divine grace and gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Asking for unity and faith for communion, the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ, our God. To you, to you Master, love us all, our communion, love, we implore for you to make us very partake with a clear conscience of your heavenly and awesome mysteries. From this sacred and spiritual table, may they bring about their mischievous sins, the pardon of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the full heavenly kingdom, confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, O Master, we may with confidence and without condemnation dare call you Father, God of heaven and sin. Son and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
thanks, O visible King, for by your measurable power of fashion, all things in the grace of your mercy. I brought all things out of malice into being, looked off of a master upon those who bow their heads to you. For they do not bow to flesh and blood, but to you, the awesome God. Therefore, a master makes move for the good of all. The path that lies ahead according to any of each, sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, cure those who are sick of physician of souls and bodies. Through the grace, the mercies, and loving kindness of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good, and light-creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive, holy gifts to holy people.